Hello. Today I would like to show you, you guys a mobile robot programmed with pipes. And it was built using this kit designed by Mauricio Duarte. It's a Brazilian kit uh, and made of uh, wooden pieces cut by laser. Okay, so you can. I will share the link uh, in the description. Uh, and the kit uh, has the, all the parts that we have to, to build, okay? What is interesting about this kit is that the, the robot is powered by two servo motors of continuous rotation and one servo motor for the ultrasonic sensor positioning well uh, let me get back here so we can see so we have one servo motor hobby servo okay on the side another on the other side and one to position the ultrasonic range finder so what is nice about this kit is that uh, it already has a description of electronic connections using an esp 8266 board, which is here at the end of the assembly manual. And uh, it also shows the pinout and connections for both servos here for the ultrasonic sensors, uh, sensor servo and for the sensor itself. Well, uh, you can connect the power using batteries or a power bank. In my case, I use it only uh, two amps power bank, both for the motors and the ESP8266 boards. What is nice about this module is that we can install MicroPython in this module and easily control, monitor, and program it using pipes. So that's what I am going to show you now. Just change the screen, okay? So here we have the pipes screen. So you just access pipes.net.br, and you you are already in the programming environment, block based. And uh, in the case of this robot, I decided to create functions. So. Uh, if you are used to electronics, uh, you may know that we can control servos using the PWM pins. And basically, we have three pins, D4, D1, and D2. These pins are each one connected to a servo signal pin. And by sending, by selecting the dirty cycle of the PWM output, we can define the angle or the speed. The angle if it's a positioning servo or the speed if it is a continuous rotation servo. So I created a function, left motor stop, left motor forward, left mo motor reverse, right motor stop, right motor forward, forward, and so on. You can see that these functions that are created are quite simple. Uh, for example, left motor stop just calls the PWM option, which I, uh, I got from machine in out pins and select this option, okay? All the functions that I created are available here at the toolbox on the functions. And I can reuse those functions. So for example, I created right motor forward, left motor forward, and then I created another function forward, which prints move forward to the console and calls right motor front, left motor front, and we can even specify the speed. The stop function, it calls the right motor stop and left motor stop. If we take a look at 
left motor stop, it's, it sets a dirty cycle of 75 that I uh, um, experimentally defined, uh, observed that it stops the servo. Less than 75, it turns in one direction. More than 30, 75, it turns in another direction. So we have all these blocks for um, movement, and there is one that is a little bit different. Uh, that is the servo position, sensor position servo function. Uh, it receives an angle as a parameter, uh, and it prints move sensor to angle and shows the angle. Well, and here is the main program, stop, forward, uh, this is just a, a test I did, okay? We, we could even delete this, uh, but it, uh, it goes forward for six seconds, stop, then it turns around by uh, powering just one motor, delays again, forward, delays again, stop, then it powers another motor, delay, forward, stop, delay, and then, we count from 70, 65 to 100 to move, to slowly move the positioning servo of the ultrasonic range finder. Then we go back. Here we go in, in one direction. Then we go back. Then we go back to the center. After all, all these steps, we start the ultrasonic range finder and we enter in a continuous loop, which will make the robot go forward continuously until the dist uh, while the distance is more than 100. The output of our sensor here is in millimeters. So while the robot sees nothing uh, in front of it in a distance of 10 centimeters, okay, 100 millimeters, uh, it goes forward. When the robot sees uh, an object that, that is um, uh, near and in the range of 10 centimeters, it, the, this condition is no more true, okay? So uh, we get out of this loop and the robot stops. Now, finally, we enter uh, an infinite loop to continually sprint the ultrasonic sensor readings. And I will show the IoT option of BIPES to you when this happens, okay? So let's, I am on the BIPES console here, okay? If I click console, I can interact with the board on the robot. I can type help, I can, I can interact with a Python micro Python interpreter on the board, and I can click play, okay? From anywhere on the screen, I can click play, and BIPES will transfer the, the whole program, will convert the program from blocks to micro Python. It will transfer to the board and execute it, okay? In, in a few seconds, it will run. Uh, okay, now we see the robots moving, and the console out shows us what is happening, okay? If you look at the console, we, we, we see the prints uh, about what is going on with the robot, okay? Now we are, uh, we are moving the ultrasonic sensor, okay? And finally, we are... Okay, what happened now? is that uh, now we have a cat interested in the robot, okay? But what happened is that the robot 
went forward until the, the wall. And when the ultrasonic range finder uh, noticed that the distance was less than 10 centimeters, the robot stopped, okay? As programmed by these, these, these blocks here, okay? Uh, what is happening now is that, let me just make it a little bit bigger. I don't know if it makes uh, much difference, but uh, we are now seeing BIPs data, one, it's the ID of the information, and the number, which is the distance from the sensor to the wall, 36 mi millimeters, okay? Um, I will get the robot here in my hand so we can uh, uh, see the distance as, uh, as we put some kind of objects, okay? Just a minute. So, we have the robot here with me now. And of course, I didn't say, but I, I think it was obvious from the start. Uh, I am interacting with it using Wi Fi. The robot is connected to Wi Fi network using BIPES option uh, of Web REPL, which we can connect here. So, BIPES allows us to connect, control, monitor, and interact with, with our device using Bluetooth, USB serial ports, or network, okay? So we are connected using network now. Um, well, I have the robot here, okay? In, let me just... I have the robot here now, um, and as I move, my hand towards the robot or or far away from the robot, we can see that the BIPES data uh, changes on the console, okay? BIPES data uh, is provided by this block, okay, people? Show data on IoT tab free board. Uh, the truth is that this BIPES, BIPES data block only prints uh, internally, it is a print. Okay, uh, what is nice now that I wanted to show you is as we are receiving data using the BIPES data command, we can go to the IoT tab here of BIPES, and we have two options of dashboard powered by Freeboard. One is using the Forest TAM, and another is using the Classic TAM. We, we can switch as we want, okay? I am switching to the classic pre-board, at, at least for this test. And what is nice is that we can add several data sources. Uh, and here there are two special data sources, BIPES Easy MQTT and BIPES Serial USB or Bluetooth. I will select BIPES Serial USB or Bluetooth, and we have to set a name. I will I will just um, write here sensor, okay? Uh, message ID, I will write number one here. If we go to the blocks, the ID is one, okay? Now uh, we can specify the refresh rate of, of how, how, how fast we pull the sensor, okay? And I will put here, uh, half a second, 0 0.5, okay, save, and uh, automatically we can see that this information is already being uh, collected, triggered from, from our sensor, okay. Uh, we can select a, a lot of options, I, I, I could use uh, 100 milliseconds, for example, okay. Um, and now we are going to uh, build a dashboard to view the data from the sensor. We already have the information here on the console. 
uh, remotely, okay? And these robots could be anywhere on the internet. It could, it could be on, on another city or country, and I could be doing exactly the same thing using the internet, okay? Um, Bipes connection to the board is over web sockets and web R-I-E-P-L from MicroPython. So we can add panes here like this, and we can move, drag and drop, and configure the panes. And I will add on the pane, sorry, on the pane, we can click on the plus sign, and we can, for example, add a gouge. So we can give a, a we can select this option and uh, I will write here distance, oops, distance, and to select the value of this data source, we click data source and automatically we will have a list of options. I will select sensors, uh, units, I will write millimeters, uh, minimum, we know that this sensor is from about, um, uh, two centimeters, so we will put 20 millimeters to four meters. So we'll, I will put, I will write 400 so that it's is uh, better to see. Okay, so we have our gauge here, um, and it is reading a hundred and um, a hundred and two thousand eighty something, eight, uh, <laughs> something, uh, and as I put my hand in, in, in the front of the sensor, we can see this, this value is changing, okay? We can add more widgets, so I will click on the plus button here, okay? And we can, for example, uh, add a time series, so I will select time series, and uh, the time frame of the time series, the type of the chart, uh, the title, I don't know, distance. And again, we can select the data source. We can select several da data sources so we can have in multiple lines and save. Okay, so here it is. We are plotting a real time graph of the distance. We can uh, change the size, okay, it's with, I can change this to three columns. Um, let me just change here two, so it updates, okay. So uh, here are the points collected from the, from the sensor. They are being shown the IoT tab, and I, I can, I can have this dashboard on, in real time uh, being monitored. More than that, uh, we can, let me just go to the console, we can turn on the easy M, MQTT option. I will not show this, this now, but if we turn on the easy MQTT option, uh, BIP, BIPs will breach this information to a server on the cloud and you can share the dashboard and the graphics with anyone on the internet so this applies to this robot to a temperature sensor or to or to any other sensor we might be sharing information okay um well i think that's that's enough for 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 now thank you for your time and your attention best regards everyone